Hello, Ming Lavashe. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Learn English with May. So, right now it is about 8 30 on a Friday evening, and I wanted to just give you all a glimpse of my life working as an assistant professor teaching English at a university in Japan. So, I'm going to talk about uh, the number of courses I teach the kind of things that I need to do as part of my job responsibilities and um, my typical schedule for the semester. So for a typical semester, I would teach around nine to 10 classes per week. Uh, sometimes I teach about eight to nine classes also depending on the semester and the depending on the courses that uh, That we're offering for the semester, but typically it is about eight to it is between eight to nine um, Classes per week now the number of courses that you teach can also vary sometimes you might be teaching one course only the whole semester, which means you'll have only one or two lesson plans for the whole semester, which would make life a lot easier. Or sometimes you might be teaching three to four different courses, which means you will have like, you know, maybe five to six different lesson plans, depending on uh, the number of times each course meets uh, within a week. Um, a lot of the times it is a mix. So for myself, this semester, I'm teaching three different courses and two of these courses meet twice a week, which means that I have to prepare four different lesson plans for them. And the other course I teach once a week only, but this course, I have three different classes, the same course, so one lesson plan, but three classes. So that's how my typical schedule uh, looks like and it sounds a bit daunting at first but it's not if you have um, you know uh, time which we usually do before the uh, the breaks before the semester begin for example we've got like the summer break coming up which is August and September you can take some time out of that break to prepare your lessons to prepare the materials for the course uh, that way, when the semester begins, you'll be all set. So it is, uh, it requires planning and thinking ahead, but it's not exactly um, that difficult to create lesson plans beforehand. However, you would have to be, you would have to learn to be, learn to think on your feet many times throughout the semester because maybe the particular lesson that you have planned it won't work or maybe, you know, just the students are not responding well to the kind of materials you have prepped or maybe just you might want to change, you know, like the direction of the course that you're taking uh, your teaching it can happen so you know all of these requires that even though you might have planned way ahead before the semester began throughout the semester you might have to make some accommodations and adjustments it's typical for uh, teaching jobs I believe at any level really because teaching is about the students and you need to read the room and see uh, whether the students are responding to the things that you have planned the way that you'd like them to be responding or the way that you would like the lessons overall uh, the atmosphere in the class to be you know going so you have to really learn to think on your feet but uh, nevertheless planning ahead will definitely help you get through the semester a lot easier so what it, you know what I find quite challenging and stressful is getting caught up with all of the assignments <laughs> so sometimes we get quite a lot of writing classes which is what's happening to me this semester and also next semester so when you have a lot of writing classes and if your classes are really big that is the thing that you can't prepare beforehand. You're definitely going to, you know, be struggling to get caught up with all of the essays and giving timely feedback to the students so you can, you know, give them opportunities to make 
uh, edits to their work and resubmit them for better grades. So those kind of things will definitely take up a lot of your time and that happens to me. That's what's happening to me right now. Like that's why I'm staying uh, like until like eight o'clock in the evening on a Friday night, uh, on a Friday evening to, um, to finish grading and giving feedback to my students. Um, you can plan, uh, you know, this accordingly too, depending on the nature of the course and how flexible your university might be. Uh, for me, I stagger assignments. I also do like uh, feedback, like right in the classroom. We do like the writing, we do the writing process. Like for example, we do the outlines first, we look for the references and then we do the, um, like I give them feedback for the outlines. So I know that they're going in the right direction even before they start writing their essays. And then I also give them class time to uh, work on their introductions, for example, so I can check their thesis statements before they actually complete their essays as well. So there's a lot of like t time spent in the classroom where I can give them feedback there and then. And that's what I do to kind of alleviate the um, burden of checking full essays uh, throughout the semester. You can also reduce the number of essays that you ask students to submit and you know focus on uh, focus on like skills like writing longer sentences using uh, relative clauses for example so that's something that you can do as well understanding how to construct sentences and you know make uh, paragraphs coherent and cohesive between them linking you know ideas and things like that so those kind of things you can probably be you know teaching them while you're asking or assigning them like essays so that's what I do to kind of you know alleviate the pressure of having to check 20,000 essays in one go um, so that's like a typical schedule that's the kind of thing that I do uh, for each semester there are some additional stuff that we do also like admin work uh, you, um, you might have to prepare a report or two throughout the semester. You might have to prepare for the faculty meetings, things that you want to say, things you want to ask, things that you might want to contribute to the faculty, but nothing major really at my level. So I'm pretty like uh, my level of admin work when it comes to office work is pretty low. My level of admin work when it comes to my grades and like keeping track of the students is pretty high, but that's a necessity for every single class that we have because we need to keep proper records in case the students want to check their progress or in case um, the students uh, contest the grades that you give them at the end of the semester which can happen you need to be able to show this is what you have done throughout the semester this is how you have been graded so uh, keeping careful like proper record of all of their grades, all of their attendance, all of their participation, homework, all these things are really important for your job and for the student, mainly for yourself, right? Um, yes, another thing that, uh, that we need to talk about is like working late. <laughs> It is normal, I believe, for all of the teachers that I know at the university level to work late at least, you know, three or four times a month. Uh, a lot of my friends and I would like sit down using Zoom and we'll just have these accountability sessions where we tell each other the goals for the evening and we just mute ourselves and then we, you know, kind of like help each other achieve these grading goals or whatever goals that we want to achieve uh, for the, the week or for the evening. Evening. and you do need that because if you don't do it you're probably not going to be able to catch up at the end of the semester so what happens at the end of the semester is that when if you don't keep track of what the students are doing you're probably going to end up with a couple of students every class where they've missed like big quizzes or a big assignments and that's going to you know result in them getting a very low grade or not passing the course and it is our responsibility to warn the students if they are going to fail the course way ahead of time so that they have a choice either to redeem their course or earn you know extra credit so they can get a better grade 
So those kind of things are things that you need to tell the students, which is why I'm here in the evening because there are three weeks left in the semester and I want to be able to tell my students, the ones who've been doing badly, uh, to warn them and to pro give them an opportunity to get caught up with everything that they need to get caught up if they so wish to. I don't force them it's up to them, they're at the university level, they need to be responsible. If I give them a warning, they should be able to come to me and ask me like, I want to do something, what can I do to redeem my uh, grade, right? So that's something that you need to be able to uh, tell your students, which is why we work late. <laughs> Um, yes, and when the semester ends, it's really difficult to catch the students. They disappear off into the night. <laughs> they just disappear off to wherever they go, and I will want to disappear too. I don't want to spend my summer vacation in the office. I want to be able to finish the semester and be ready to submit all of the grades, and I want the students to be all on board, like this is the grades you're getting be aware of it, right? I don't want any surprises. I don't want people like sending complaint emails and stuff to the faculty office to say like, oh, I don't ag agree with this grade that I've been given. I want them to know that all of the things that they've been, the grades that they've been given are transparent and the whole semester, they have a chance to see how well or how badly they're doing. So yeah, that requires working well into the night. Um, a lot of you asked me last time if I needed to know Japanese language in order for me to work at the university here. Uh, the answer is no for me. There are some universities which require, they are adamant that people who work in Japan at the university know at least a basic level of Japanese, but I was very lucky because nobody actually required me to do that. I also taught in a program, I'm also teaching in a program where English is the medium of instruction so the students actually want that so they're not really you know bothered by the fact that I can't speak Japanese to explain to them about things they have a certain level of proficiency and they're able to follow along in the class most of the time so I'm very lucky in that sense but again this is not the norm this is a unique situation and there are many universities which will require or maybe even prefer uh, you know, candidates, if they're looking for new candidates for positions, do prefer, uh, they, they would prefer that their candidates be able to speak Japanese so that they can do admin work with independently without, you know, causing a lot of chaos in the office. So my university has been very accommodating for me, to me, in, this sen in that sense. Yeah, so I've talked about the schedule, I've talked about classes, my typical thing. Ah, okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about is sometimes we do get like extra classes uh, and like intensive classes to teach. And sometimes we also do these like English like camp stuff, which is, um, you know, uh, basically like a short exchange program that we run for example for my program last this year I've taken my students to Taiwan and we're also going to take them to Korea in September so those kind of things fall in between like semester breaks so you don't really get like semester breaks like consecutively and you don't really you know there's like an unwritten like kind of rule like you don't have to show up every single day during the breaks you know into to your office but you have to be like around you can't be like you know all over another different country you need to be around uh if, but if you're going to be traveling it to another country then you need to take proper leave for that but that also depends on the university if you're working for a national university or if you're working for a private university the rules are different so that's something that you need to explore if you're considering applying for any of the universities in Japan um, one of the biggest benefits of working in, 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 in a university, a national university in Japan, is that it comes with research budget. The research budget is usually, uh, it, it varies depending on the program and depending on the university, but we have a research budget that we can use to travel abroad or travel within the country to go to conferences, to apply to conferences, to, you know, use the research budget for buy to buy books and things like that. So that's one of the biggest benefits of working in Japan. And honestly, not a lot of the universities in Southeast Asia provide this kind of opportunity. So again, 
very good for career development and there are also other opportunities for you to like apply for grants and funding from the government and things like that as well on top of the university research budget that they provide so all in all really good place if you are going to make use of all of these resources and benefits given to you to upgrade and develop your career all right so i think i'm going to end the video here and i'm going to go back home and i'm going to rest for a couple of hours and if i feel like it i'll continue grading some essays i think i might want to do that because friday evenings are pretty laid back and i enjoy reading my students essays I guess maybe that might be a sad sign that I don't really have a life outside of teaching. <laughs> but that's not the case. I, I just enjoy uh, what I like to do, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to spin it into a negative thing. It's a positive thing. I'm really glad that I am in a profession that I enjoy. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you so much for watching till the end. And if you have any questions, leave me some questions or comments in the comment section mm -hmm. that was a weird thing to have said i think i repeated the word comment quite a few times anyway you know what i mean if you want to ask me any questions do so thank you for watching and don't forget to share and subscribe bye